Hello, everyone. My name is Jixin Tang from the University of Chicago. Today, I'm happy to present my work on building a resource-efficient database for data analysis. Databases have been used to support many data analysis applications, such as smart healthcare, business intelligence, and many more. One important task is to analyze the data set under changes, such as incorporating the transaction log into the database or loading the newly collected data into the database. In this scenario, users will submit a standing query to maintain the up-to-date results or observe, or, or observe how the results change over time. Prior projects are many optimized to improve the raw performance of database, like lowering the query latency. Consider the example of querying a stream of tuples that has been loaded into the database. Here, users submit a scheduled query to analyze the daily loaded data. The query latency is defined as the time between all data arrives and the result is returned. Prior projects in continuous query processing or stream computing are many optimized to eagerly lower the query latency. However, eager query execution also means consuming the resources eagerly. For example, Many continuous query systems will keep all intermediate states in a memory like the hash table, for, hash table for hash join or maintain those intermediate states like for every new tuple. This greatly increases both CPU and memory consumption, but resources are not free, especially in today's paper use model. So users actually allow a relaxed performance to reduce a to reduce resource consumption. On the other hand, lazy query execution like batch processing or deferred increment view maintenance is mainly optimized to reduce resource consumption by deferring some query execution or uh, not keeping all intermediate states, but suffer high query latency. Existing approaches are mainly optimized for applications on the two ends. But the middle ground between the two is rarely exploited. My research is focused on the applications in the middle ground where users allow a relaxed time or time stackness to reduce the resource consumption, but also want to see a timely result. While it is possible to adapt existing approaches to uh, explore this middle ground, but uh, there does not exist a systematic solution. We find that compared to existing approaches, approaches, it is possible to exploit the time slackness information to lower the query latency or reduce the resource consumption without sacrificing the other. Therefore, we propose a resource efficient database to exploit this middle ground. It also bridges the prior research on the ends of lazy and eager query execution. This is possible because this time slackness enables several new system strategies. For example, unlike the continuous query processing that keeps all intermediate states, we're able to uh, keep a subset of states to save memory and uh, rebuild them when necessary. Other interesting strategies could be we could start the query late and maintain part of the query lazily to reduce the CPU consumption. This snagness also allows the system a period to additionally extract or build some metadata information like bit vectors to reduce the cost of data loading. We propose CrocodileDB, a resource efficient database for data pipelines. The design of CrocodileDB does not regard the system as an isolated one, but looks at the full picture of data pipelines. Specifically, and CrocodileDB systematically integrates information about how databases interact with users and other data systems. Examples of the information could be the performance goals required by users or the data arrival rate, the new data. In CrocodileDB, we leverage this information to redesign several new database components. We first have a user model that allows users to specify a performance goal that the, uh, the database is optimized for. With that, we have a query execution engine uh, that is able to optimize single and multiple queries to reduce, further reduce, 
to reduce the CPU consumption. And this execution engine interacts with the memory uh, with the memory management component uh, to further reduce the memory consumption. Finally, we have a data loader that is able to use a uh, partial data loading to make the data quickly available. In this talk, I will mainly focus on the uh, two major projects in compatibility where query processing and information query processing, and then talk about my ongoing projects and future work. Let me start with intermittent query processing. Let's first look at today's approaches on maintaining a standing query from the perspective of query latency and the memory consumption. Some approaches are mainly optimized to uh, lower the query latency and tend to keep all intermediate states or even build more auxiliary data structures to reduce the query latency. These approaches such as continuous query processing or immediate incremental view maintenance are many optimized to process the high velocity data. Examples of the intermediate states could be the hash tables for hash showing and sorted arrays for sort operators. On the other hand, some other approaches are uh, attempt to favor reducing the uh, memory consumption. They will discard all intermediate states after each execution and rebuild them when to process the new data. These approaches like batch processing or deferred equipment view maintenance are many used to uh, process relatively static data sets. Existing approaches are good if they are used to process the, uh, to support the applications, their target applications. But we also find some applications none of this, this approaches is optimized for. Therefore, we propose intermittent query processing for these applications to achieve low query latency and low memory consumption at the same time. Specifically, we consider an incomplete data set with the remaining data arriving in an intermittent but, but predictable way. Let's look at one concrete example, data cleaning pipeline. In this data cleaning pipeline, this data cleaning system will first split the dirty data set into two parts, the clean data and dirty data. The clean data is first loaded into the database and ready for query. And uh, the data cleaning system, system will clean the dirty data to output the cleaned tuples. Because the data cleaning process is time consuming, the uh, clean tuples will arrive at a, a low rate or intermittently. What's interesting here is that the database actually knows the knowledge about the new data, like which relation is being cleaned and the data arrival rate of the clean tuples. Let's look at an example of how this standing, one standing query is executed over time for this data arrival pattern. When the clean data arrives, we will start the query for the first query execution. It is followed by a long tail of clean tuples. Since the clean tuples arrive at low rate or intermittently, users tend to maintain this result lazily. Interesting here is there is an idle time between executions where there's no data to process or no scheduled queries or no scheduled executions. Prior approaches are many to keep all intermediate states to lower the query latency or dis discard all states to save memory consumption. So we ask a question here, can we keep a subset of states to reduce the mem memory consumption when the data, when the query is inactive or there's no data to process and then reuse those saved states to quickly process new data to lower the query latency. To achieve this, we, pro um, we propose intermittent query processing. In intermittent query processing, when one execution is finished, we will discard some states to put, put this query into an inactive state. When new data arrives, we will reuse this saved states to process the new data, to quickly process the new data to lower the query latency. Here, the new data for each execution is called a delta data. So the question here is that how to choose the subset of states within your memory budget? The answer is to leverage the information about the new data, like which relations have delta data and how many new tuples for each relation. This, uh, this information is critical in selecting the right states to keep 
for example, consider this simple hash join with the hash table as its state. If the um, new data comes from R, we will keep this hash table because uh, the new tuple from R can probe this hash table to output the joint result. However, if the new data comes from comes from S, keeping this hash table does not help because for every new tuple from S, we have to rescan the table R to find the matched tuples. Therefore, we can and we consider converting this simple hash join into a symmetric one and building and build new states for processing the new data from S. We propose these a delta or uh, the delta oriented uh, intermediate state selection. It considers three types of intermediate states to select. The first is those already materialized in the original plan, like the hash table for the hash join. We also find there are some intermediate states that are output um, but not materialized, like the output from R. Therefore, we consider uh, inserting a materialized operator to keep those intermediate states. We additionally uh, build new states for uh, that are not generated in the original plan. Let's look at how the, this works um, during query execution. During query execution. When it is processing the current data, it will additionally uh, build some uh, new states for future query processing, like the blue hash table. After this uh, query execution is finished, it will discard some states within a memory budget. And when new data arrives, it will reuse those saved states to quickly process the new data, like in this example, it's a new data from T. So the optimization problem here is that and uh, how to minimize the time of incorporating the or processing the delta data plus the time of creating the new state within a memory budget. We propose a dynamic programming algorithm for this. It's it, essentially the idea is to choose the minimum cost across different states, state configurations. Do we keep the state, discard the state, or build new states? Consider this. Uh, operator as an example with the hash table as its state, we have two options here. If we choose keep this hash table, I will have the benefit of not having to recompute the state which you want to process the new data, but we have a lower memory budget for child subtree. If we choose to discard the hash table, it has the opposite effect. Now let's look at how to compute this minimal cost of processing the delta data for this OP subtree for a memory, memory budget M. If we keep this hash table, we should account for the cost of um, the cost of processing new data for its child subtree plus the cost of the operator itself processing the new data from child subtree. If we choose to discard this hash table, we should additionally account for the cost of rebuilding the state, but we allow a larger memory budget for the child subtree. So the minimum, minimum cost for this OP subtree is a smaller cost between the two options. We recursively compute the uh, minimum cost from bottom to top. Let's look at the experiment results. We implement these on host grids. It currently supports select project join aggregate queries. We compare these with two approaches. Host grids, default view maintenance approach, which is denoted as rebatch, it essentially discards all intermediate states after each execution. The second is Deep Toaster, which is an immediate incremental view maintenance system. We have two variants. The one that is ported Deep Toaster on, in Postgres, and the second is the raw Deep Toaster system. For people who are not familiar with Deep Toaster, it essentially recursively maintains intermediate states. For example, here, to maintain the join between R, S, and T, we, we need to additionally maintain the results of R join S, S join T, and R join T. We use a benchmark of TPC, uh, TPC Edge with 5 gigabytes data and 11 SVGA queries. All experiments are run on a machine of one, 192 gigabytes, and we use one thread throughout the experiments. In this experiment, we want to highlight two results. The first is that under intermittent workloads, how does this perform compared to rebatch 
and deep toaster. And uh, how does our deep algorithm work under like different memory budgets on, under the constrained memory budgets compared to recycler, uh, which is a greedy view cache algorithm for Molay DB. We consider an IQP scenario late data processing where nine percent data has already arrived. It is followed by three deltas of late data. So for each query, there are four executions in total. We set the memory budget to 192 gigabytes and all relations have that data except the nation and region. We report this total query processing time of the four executions and the memory consumption between query executions. Let's look at the result of the total uh, query processing time. Here we report the result of all 11 queries. We see that these had the lowest query processing, processing time for all queries. And for if a query did not finish within 500 seconds, we will mark it as DNF, which means did not finish. We find that many queries did not finish for the toaster. This is because the toaster recursively maintains some intermediate states that might, might not be useful for future query processing. And the maintaining the cost of maintaining this intermediate states is non-trivial. In some extreme cases like Q9, rebatch actually is better than deep toaster. Let's look at the result of the memory consumption between query executions. Here we report the average memory consumption between two query executions and report the result of these and deep toaster on post grids. We can see that uh, these has a much lower memory consumption compared to the deep toaster because deep toaster builds and maintains many more intermediate states than these. Our last experiment shows how this works under constrained memory budgets and uh, how our DP algorithm, this dynamic programming algorithm, works under different memory budgets. We vary the memory budget from 0 to 3.5 and use query 8 and the, as a test example. We test 99% data in the first execution and uh, use a single 1% delta data. We report the time of processing 1% delta data. We can see that as we are increasing the memory budget from smaller to larger one, our DP algorithm actu actually can choose a better subset of intermediate states compared to Recycler, the one used in Molay DB, because our DP algorithm can uh, considers how the data arrives. And Deep Toaster only works um, if we, we provide enough memory, in this case, it's uh, 17 gigabytes. To wrap up, we propose intermittent query processing that sits between batch processing and continuous query processing. It takes the information about the intermittent and predict predictable data arrival pattern and the input to reduce memory consumption and also lower query latency at the same time. Intermittent query processing is mainly used to process the intermittent data arrival pattern, but a more common case is that data arrives continuously. In this case, we propose incrementability of web query processing to address this, uh, to reduce CPU consumption in this scenario. It is known that incremental execution can reduce query latency. Consider our prior example of querying the tuples on the loading. Recall that the query latency is defined as the time between all data arrives and the result is returned. Incremental execution compared to the uh, batch processing, it could start the query early and incrementally incorporate, incorporate new tuples into prior results to lower the query latency. If we want to execute, if we want to lower this uh, query latency, we can execute the, the query more eagerly like we can start one execution for every smaller amount of data. However, incremental execution may have wasted work and also increase the total query work. Consider this query as example. It first computes the average balance for all customers and then use a join to find all customers with a balance that is higher than the average one. When a new customer is inserted and the average balance is updated, we will we have to rescan this customer table to find the new set of tuples 
that meet the new join condition. If we maintain this query eagerly, like for every new tuple, we have to repeatedly rescan this customer table and also uh, remove old results. That means the eager incremental execution will increase the total query work, also at the same time, it is also reducing the query latency. Interestingly, we find not all eager execution will increase the total work. For example, eagerly maintaining this average balance does not increase the total work because all uh, customers inserted should, be con should con contribute to computing the average balance and uh, we do not need to remove old results. It is a join operator that introduces the wasted work and therefore should be maintained lazily. Therefore, we consider de decomposing this query into smaller pieces and execute them at different frequencies, some lazily, some eagerly. Specifically, we decompose a query into query path. A query path is actually a data flow that flushes tuples from one input or blocking operator to the output or the next blocking operator. Let's look at an example of how to execute this this decomposed plan. Here we assign each query path with a pace, which represents how many times we execute this query path. The higher the pace is, the more eagerly we execute a query path. For example, pace three means we will start one execution for every one third of the total estimated input tuples. When all data arrives, we will start the query path B and C because their paces are set to one. Compared to existing approach that using a single pace, we're able to lower the total work and also achieve similar latency. So the problem here is that how to find the pace configuration that minimizes the total work and also meets the final work constraint. In this case, we, uh, here the total work represent, represents the total unit work done by the whole query. It is proxy for CPU consumption. And the final work is the unit of work to be done after all data arrives. It is proxy for query latency. To address this problem, we propose incrementability aware query processing or NQP. It takes a query and the final work as input. The query specifies a SQL statement and what data to query, like the daily loaded data. Here, the final work constraint is defined as a ratio between the desired final work users want to achieve and the final work of batch processing. For example, 0.03, the constraint 0.03 means that users want to reduce their final work to 30% of the one of batch processing. NQP additionally takes the information about the estimated data arrival rate to find the space configuration that can meet the final work constraint and also lower the total, total uh, query work. In NQP, we propose a lawful metric incrementability to quantify how cost effective it is to afford each query each incremental execution. We also have a new cost model to compute the incrementability. And finally, we propose an optimization algorithm to find the space configuration based on incrementability. Let's start with the definition of the incrementability for a query with a single pace. Essentially, incremental execution make trade-offs between the total work and final work. If the pace is one, which means it is executed using batch processing, as we are increasing the pace from, from a smaller to a larger one, actually have the benefit of a decreased final work, but, uh, but have the overhead of increased total work. Therefore, we define the incrementability and the ratio between, to, between the two. It, it, it represents the amount of final work reduced per unit of the additional total work we have invested. The higher the value is, the more amiable a query is to incremental execution. Now, let's look at the definition of incrementability between two pace configurations. Here, a pace configuration includes the set of paces for all query paths. We require that pace configuration B should be more eager than pace configuration A, which means for any pace in PB, 
you should be no smaller than the creating pace, corresponding pace in PA, and there is at least one pace in PB that is larger than the pace in PA. We use our cost model to compute the final work and total work of a pace configuration as such that we can get the value of incrementability. Let's look at the cost model for computing the incrementability. We find that the uh, cardinality of delays and updates are essentially very important in computing the incrementability because we want to estimate how many tuples output in a prior um, prior executions are removed by later executions. Therefore, instead of estimating the total number of rows output from each operator, we, es we estimate the number of inserts, delays, and uh, updates separately. For example, for a select for for a selectivity for a, a select operator, we expand the selectivity, the single selectivity, into a selectivity matrix, and each cell represents the selectivity of mapping one type of input tuple to another type of output tuple. With this, we use a, a simulation algorithm to estimate the final and total work. This algorithm essentially simulates how the query executes with respect to a pace configuration. Consider this query as an example. It has three pace, uh, query paths and with a pace 3, 1, 1. And uh, if we assume the total number of customer table, uh, customer tuples is 300, the pace 3 means we will start one execution for every 100 tuples. This execution, the cost of the execution is uh, included in the total work. We continue to do this until all data arrives and this ex the final execution and the cost of the final execution is the one of final work. With the incrementability computed, we propose an optimization algorithm to find the pace configuration that can minimize the total work and also meet, work, meet the final work constraint. Recall that the final work constraint is a proxy for query latency. This algorithm starts at uh, the batch processing where all paces are set to one, and we will gradually increase the pace from smaller to larger one to reduce this uh, final work. Before that, we will check whether this optimization should finish, which is either when we have met the final work constraint or have reached the max pace. If not, we consider increase one query, one pace of one query path by one, we check all three possible options and take the one with the highest incrementability. Now we have a new pace configuration where we will continue to do this until this optimization finishes. InQP is uh, implemented on Spark SQL. We use Kafka as the data source. We compare InQP with, uh, to a baseline, which is uh, an incrementability of previous approach on Spark SQL. It essentially uses a single pace for the whole query, and we decide this query based on InQP's cost model to meet this final work constraint. We test all 22, uh, 22 TPCH queries plus two handwritten queries using TPCH schema. We note that the line item table actually occupies 70% of the total TPCH data to make sure that all queries have relatively large data set or working set and does not run out of memory. We, uh, for queries that access line item table, we use scale factor 10. Otherwise, we will use scale factor 100. We simulate a loading process of the rate of one gigabyte per minute and set the max pace to 100. All experiments are run on a machine uh, with 192 gigabytes. We will use 20 cores for Spark. Let's look at the first experiment. Here we report the additional CPU seconds invested or used in incremental execution compared to the batch processing. We test all queries, but only show the queries that introduce the wasted work. In terms of the final work constraint, we use 0.02 if the cost model permits. We find that for um, some queries, the cost model cannot meet this final work constraint even if it has used this highest 
possible max pace. In those cases, we will use 0.05. For the queries that use scale factor 10, we mark them as a number sign. We can see that NQP has much lower additional CPU consumption compared to this incrementability of previous approach. And this approach has much higher CPU seconds for two flipping because this query needs to maintain a max aggregate operator with respect to the needs. In our implementation, if the, the max value is deleted, we have to rescan all values around so far to find the new max value. NQP can reduce this cost by lazily maintaining this max aggregate operator. Next, let's look at how much latency we have missed compared to a latency goal, which is defined as the product between the file level constraint and the latency of batch processing. We have the missed latency mostly due to the inaccuracy of the cost model. We report this aggregated results of the missed latency for all queries. We see that NQP actually has a much lower missed latency goal overall, and in the worst cases, the incrementability of previous approach has missed this latency for more than 100 for more than 100 seconds, and NQP only missed the latency for eight seconds. Next, we report how NQP works under various file work constraints. We report the additional CPU time on the x-axis and the query latency on the y-axis. We start with the constraint one, which is case of batch processing and gradually decrease the uh, file work constraint. We can see that for all constraints, NQP has similar latency but much lower CPU consumption compared to the baseline. Com uh, consider this uh, case of 0.05, uh, which where it has the latency goal of five seconds. Both approaches are very close to the latency goal, but NQP has much lower uh, CPU consumption. In summary, we propose NQP as a longer query processing method that sits, that sits between batch processing and continuous query processing. It takes the information about users' performance goal as the input to reduce the total query work and also achieve similar latency. Before I jump into all the projects, I would also like to compare NQP and IQP a little bit. The two approaches are applied to different scenarios and are complementary to each other. When the data arrives continuously, we will use NQP to lazily maintain part of the query to reduce the CPU consumption. But when the data arrives at a low rate or intermittently, we will use IQP to discard some states to save memory resources. How to integrate the two approaches into a single system is, uh, is an interesting research topic in the future. Aside from this uh, published work, I would also like to introduce two ongoing projects. It is known that shared query execution can reduce the redundant work across concurrent queries, but the traditional multi query optimizer is not aware of this um, performance goals or latency goals specified by users. Therefore, they may not generate efficient plans in this scenario. Specifically, we consider this problem. Given queries with different latency goals, should we share them or not, even if they're executed over the same data that is being loaded into the database? Consider the two queries as an example. They have a common plan which has a shared opportunity. It could be two physical plans with only the predicates different. If we choose to execute them separately, we will choose the first one eagerly because it has a lower latency goal, but the second one lazily. However, if we choose to uh, execute the two queries in a shared plan, we have to execute the whole shared plan eagerly because we have to meet the lowest or the smaller latency goal between the two. There are two problems with this eager execution of the shared plan. The first is that this unique plan for Q2 actually has overly eager execution. As we show in the NQP paper or NQP talk, we see that the eager execution can increase the total query work 
which may offset the benefit of the shared credit execution. In addition, this common plan actually has a larger combined work compared to executing Q1 and Q2 separately. For example, consider this query work done by the common plan. We can see there is a you know, overlap, a large overlap work between Q1 and Q2, but there's still some work that is unique to the two queries separately. Therefore, this common plan will do larger combined work compared to the uh, executing the two queries separately. But uh, to meet this lower latency goal of Q1, the, the common plan needs to be executed more eagerly. Therefore, this is another cost or overhead for this shared plan. To highlight this problem, we test, we perform an, an experiment to test two queries by executing them separately or in a shared fashion. We report uh, the CPU seconds the two queries have used. First, we execute the two queries in one batch. We can see that the shared plan actually has lower CPU time, but if we set the uh, two different latency goals, we can see the shared plan has a much higher CPU time. This experiment shows that because of the, because a traditional multi optimizer is not aware of the latency goals, they may generate suboptimal query plans. And this also highlights that we need a more judicious shared execution, like considering what sub plans should be shared and how eagerly to execute different parts, different parts of the shared plan. In addition to the primary projects, I'm mentoring an undergrad student to work on this client-assisted data loading. Here, the data loading converts the raw data formats like the JSON into a binary data format like Parquet, which is cheaper for a query to access. But the data loading itself is a time-consuming process due to its validation, type parsing, and transformation. For the cases when we load the prospective queries and, and can defer some of the loading work to the future, we are exploring how to push the predicates of the prospective queries into the data clients, like the edge sensors to extract useful information, like the bit vectors. Here, the, each bit represents whether a record is valid for a predicate. These bit vectors are very useful to accelerate the loading process, and we can also leave parts of the data unloaded when, the, when users will request them. But computing resources on the client side is not a lot free, so the question, the research problem here is, given the a budget on the client side, which predicates should be pushed down? Looking to the future and broadly open to any risk, uh, database or system related problems. My current vision is to build a resource efficient system for general data pipelines with end to end optimizations. My, re my research vision is based on three observations on today's uh, applications and systems for data pipelines. The first is that users are more and more involved into the data analysis, like data exploration. It is demanded to incorporate the information about users' behaviors into the system to build a more resource-efficient data pipeline. For example, in the interactive data analysis scenario, users actually expect a low response time result. In those, uh, so many existing systems will eagerly pre-compute some results that could be used by future queries. One idea here is that if we allow users to specify a response time constraint, we can only partially compute or partially pre-compute some results to reduce the CPU consumption compared to existing work and also incrementally compute the full results to meet this response time constraint when users request. Another idea is to partially load or prepare some data that users are interested in. Like in the interactive data analysis, users are mostly interested in the first few rows 
or of a table. So we can uh, prioritize loading those data and defer, defer the rest to the future. Another observation is that today's data analysis not just involves relational operators, but also long relational operators. This research direction is to uh, achieve a general incremental execution that support long relational operators. For example, one key metric for efficient incremental execution is incrementability. But it's, the challenge here is that how to compute the incrementability when the uh, semantics is not, not clear, like for UDF. Finally, we observe that in today's cloud, there does not exist a so-called the long running a data pipeline service. One challenge here is that how to manage the states. So I believe there should be a unified intermediate states as intermediate state store that is able to manage states across different operators rather than let users to or developers to manage their own. This is especially challenging in today's disaggregated data center. To provide the service, we also need to automatically and adaptively choose the right strategies based on the workload. Like we, do we use batch processing, continuous query processing, or anywhere between based on the workload changes. To conclude, my research is focused on resource efficient data analysis. From users' perspective, we provide the tunable performance goals or resource budgets. From the application's perspective, my research is mainly focused on relational operators, but there's no problem to extend my research to support a wide range of applications. And internally, the system, the system can choose the right uh, strategies for the specific performance requirement and, and applications. Thanks.